Palantir is expected to report four quarter earnings on Monday, February 5th after the market closes. Currently, the market cap for Palantir is $37 billion, has a forward PE of 58.8 times. So in this video, we're going to discuss what Palantir is expected to report, what the market is expecting for this quarter and for the coming fiscal years. Now currently, as you can see, Palantir stock, forward PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, is lower than the four-year mean. Even if you look at price to free cash flow in the last 12 months, it is now at 78 times compared to 125.1 times. So yes, you could say Palantir right now is considered cheap. Now, of course, what most of us want to see from Palantir is continued acceleration with regards to revenue growth. When you look at a software company, we want to see sales go up faster. We know that margins are going to be high, and so if we can get accelerated sales, that would be great, that would help top and bottom lines. Now, of course, we've talked about boot camps a lot. I think that segment is going to help Palantir already in 2024. I don't know if we're really going to see big numbers in Q4, but I do expect a major impact for the guidance for the fiscal year 2024. Now, Palantir themselves, they guided for revenue between $599 to $603 million for Q4, adjusted income for operations of $184 to $188 million, and of course, being gap net income. And for full year 2023, they raised their revenue guidance to be between $2.21 to $2.22 billion. They also raised their adjusted income from operations guidance to between $607 to $611 million. And they continue to expect gap net income in each quarter of this year. And so what are the analysts expecting for the coming fiscal years? Well, for fiscal year 2024, they expect sales growth to accelerate, by the way, close to 20% year over year. EPS growth growing 19.19%. Then fiscal year 2025, another 20% growth in sales and a 21.15% year over year growth for EPS. Now, to me, that is the minimum that I'm expecting. Again, 20% growth for sales is a minimum for me as a Palantir investor that I'm expecting from them, especially after everything that we've been hearing with regards to AIP bootcamps, AIP cons from their clients, from management itself. I think 20% is the minimum that we should be expecting. And if that's the minimum that we're getting, we're going to get guidance 24 hours from this video, then we should also see the bottom line grow faster and so the multiples will become lower of course depending on how much the stock goes down or up now diving a little bit deeper with regards to the expectations more specifically net income adjusted currently the expectations are for q4 for it to be 175 million but actually if we go from q3 155 million the expectations are for it to remain flat up until q3 of this calendar year. So the market right now is really not expecting any growth with regards to net income, really not expecting any growth with regards to EPS adjusted or even gap for that matter. Then continuing here with regards to cash flow operations and free cash flow, free cash flow is actually expected to be down 25% quarter over quarter to $98 million. Cash from operations is expected to be up 22% quarter over quarter, and then another 10% quarter over quarter in Q1. Free cash flow is also expected to reaccelerate next quarter. But again, overall, the market is currently expecting Palantir to grow just a little bit and for it to be a bit volatile. So we have some ups, you have some downs, and that's what the analysts are expecting for the next coming quarters. Of course, the higher the free cash flow, the better. They can do more buybacks, they can invest in other things. In my opinion, free cash flow is always the best metric to look at. Now, before continuing, if you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, would really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now, or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So let's go over a couple of comments from some analysts, their expectations. So analysts expect a year-over-year -year increase in both the top and bottom lines with earnings per share of $0.08 cents on revenues of $602.8 million. 
investors expect the data analytics provider to report robust numbers from its commercial division, with commercial revenue growth driving upside to overall revenue. Panantir's commercial division represents about one-fifth of its sales. Probably most of the expectations are coming from US commercial as well. However, Palantir's overall growth is expected to lag rivals such as Snowflake and Databricks, Databricks of course being a private company, due to widening cracks in the firm's US government, international government and international commercial business. This is a comment according to investment firm William Blair. An LC company's government and international commercial segment weighing on its fourth quarter results. Palantir is also expected to guide to full-year expected outlook to a wider achievable range and narrow the range down throughout the year. Okay, we've seen that play out before. Then, an analyst at Jefferies. The Q4 setup is mixed, with a high hurdle on commercial growth that implies the largest quarter-over-quarter -quarter increase in over 8 Qs and more tempered expectations on government growth. Broker Jefferies noted Palantir has faced some execution issues over the past several quarters, with growth stalling in both its government and commercial business. Yes, it's true, we've talked about that. But again, with the comments that we've gotten from AIPCon, from the boot camps as well, growth should continue to reaccelerate. So that's what I said. I don't think we're going to see those numbers already now in Q4, but definitely in the outlook for fiscal year 2024. If that's not the case, then probably the stock gets hit. Now, last thing I want to touch on real quick is this partnership. So Palantir partners with one of Australia's leading retailers, that's Coal Supermarkets. They announced a three-year partnership to deliver a suite of workforce strategy and analytics tools. Palantir's platforms will bring an innovative approach to driving operational excellence and improving the way Coal's designs, executes, and continue enhances its end-to-end -end workforce strategy and integrated supply chain functions. Now, this is a big partnership. Now, how much this contract is worth? I don't know, just like with many other contracts, we didn't really get a figure to work with, so remains to be seen. Now, I've already seen a lot of comments with regards to this, with regards to the fact that Coles did partner up with Microsoft a couple of years back. For example, here in 2019, Coles takes trips down the aisles with Microsoft spurring transformation with AI and cloud to help Coles win in its second century. Now, some people said, oh, maybe their partnership with Microsoft didn't work out, and so they went with Palantir. Now, in my opinion, this is a bit too optimistic because if we scroll down here, it says the long-term partnership between Coors and Microsoft is designed to deliver precisely the digital footings for now and the future. Coors is in the process of implementing Dynamics 365 in select business units and Office 365 as part of its modern workplace program and has selected Microsoft Azure as its preferred and strategic cloud. We know that Microsoft Azure is also a partner of Palantir, or a sort of a partner of Palantir. And last time I checked, Palantir doesn't offer really something like Azure, AWS, or a Google Cloud. So in my opinion, no, I don't think they partnered up with Palantir right now because Microsoft didn't work out anymore. I think it's more of a, they're working with Microsoft and Palantir. Because if we move even further down the timeline, September 2023, Coles accelerates app builds with Azure partner Azenix. So Microsoft partner Mantle Group's Azenix helped Cole optimize its Azure development environment to significantly accelerate applications, build times, and deployments. Cole's leveraged Microsoft Azure to quickly roll out updates to its e-commerce platform in line with rapidly changing customer needs. So again, good partnership for Palantir, but that doesn't mean that Microsoft didn't work out. So to conclude, right now, Palantir, as you can see, the stock has retracted closer to the 200-day moving average, which now sits at around $15.5 or so. RSI is still pretty neutral. We are now just at the 20-day moving average. In my opinion, again, the expectations for me for Q4 are pretty simple. I want to see continued growth, but for the guidance, I want to see accelerated growth, top and bottom lines. If I don't see that, then I'll probably be prepared for the stock to drop. Maybe it will drop to the 200-day moving average, 
or maybe it will drop even further with that support line being at around 14 dollars remains to be seen of course if the numbers are great then maybe we will retest that 20 dollar area yet again so that will be it for this video of course do share your expectations down in the comments below i will definitely cover palantir's q4 earnings tomorrow after they report it so stay tuned for that if you enjoy these type of videos leave it a thumbs up subscribe if not and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye